Imagine living in one of the most extreme places on Earth. Temperatures plunge well below freezing, the ground is covered in snow and ice for most of the year, and farming is almost impossible. No fields of wheat, no orchards of fruit, no gardens of vegetables. And yet for thousands of years, the Inuit people not only survived in this environment, they thrived. How did they do it? Through a diet that would shock most nutritionists today. Almost no plants, no carbohydrates, and nearly 100% animal-based foods. This is the story of the Inuit diet and what it can teach us about human resilience, health, and the surprising power of ancestral eating. Most of us are told the same thing growing up. Eat your vegetables or your body will fall apart. But in the Arctic, where the ground's frozen and nothing grows, that advice doesn't really work. Yet somehow, people not only survived up there, they thrived. The Arctic tundra is one of the most inhospitable regions on the planet. The growing season lasts just a few weeks, and even then, only hardy plants like moss, berries, and seaweed can survive. For the Inuit, survival depended on the ocean and the land animals around them. Their diet came from hunting and fishing. Seals, walrus, whales, caribou, musk ox, salmon, arctic char, seabirds, and eggs. Every part of the animal was used. Meat, fat, organs, and bones. Waste was not an option. What's truly remarkable is that this diet, almost entirely devoid of vegetables and grains, kept them nourished and healthy in a place where most of us would not last a week. One of the biggest lessons from the Inuit diet is the importance of eating the whole animal. Unlike many modern diets that focus only on muscle meat, the Inuit prized fat, blubber, and organs. Take liver, for example. A single serving of caribou liver contains more iron than pounds and pounds of spinach. And because it's heme iron, it's absorbed far more efficiently by the body. Whale blubber is another superfood, about 70% monounsaturated fat and 30% omega-3 fatty acids. That's a nutritional profile that rivals the best so-called superfoods today. Organs also supplied vitamins A, D, E, and K2, fat-soluble nutrients that are essential for bone health, immune function, and overall vitality. These are nutrients many modern diets, even supposedly healthy ones, often lack. Now here's the mystery that puzzled explorers for centuries. Without fruits and vegetables, how did the Inuit avoid scurvy, a deadly disease caused by vitamin C deficiency? The answer lies in how they prepared and consumed their food. Raw and lightly cooked animal products actually contain vitamin C. Muktuk, which is whale skin and blubber, contains around 36 milligrams per 100 grams, more than enough to prevent scurvy. Caribou liver has about 24 milligrams. Even seal brain contains vitamin C. The Inuit didn't need oranges or lemons. Their traditional foods gave them exactly what they needed. And here's a fascinating detail. When you avoid refined carbohydrates, your body actually needs less vitamin C because glucose competes with vitamin C for absorption. In other words, their low carb diet made the small amounts they consumed even more effective. Another secret of the Inuit diet was balance, specifically the balance between fat and protein. Explorers noticed that when Inuit people had to rely on lean meat such as rabbit without enough fat, they became ill. This condition is sometimes called rabbit starvation. The Inuit knew instinctively that fat was life. Their diet was roughly 75% of calories from fat and 25% from protein. This ratio provided stable energy, warmth in the freezing cold, and protected them from the dangers of protein poisoning. Today, many ketogenic and carnivore diets aim for almost exactly this ratio. It seems our ancestors knew the formula long before modern nutrition science caught up. Surviving the Arctic winter required more than hunting skills. It required ingenuity. The Inuit developed unique ways to preserve food for the long, frozen months, 
when fresh meat was scarce. They created igunak, a fermented meat made by burying walrus or caribou underground to slowly ferment. Another delicacy was kiviak, made by fermenting hundreds of small seabirds inside a seal skin left to mature for months. While these foods might seem strange to outsiders, they were nutrient rich, calorie dense, and culturally significant. These traditions show us that food isn't just fuel. It's culture, survival, and connection to the land. So what does the Inuit diet teach us today? First, it proves that humans can thrive on an almost completely animal-based diet. Despite lacking plants and carbohydrates, the Inuit received every essential nutrient from the land and sea. Second, it highlights the dangers of modern processed foods. When Western diets, full of sugar, flour, and vegetable oils, entered Inuit communities, health outcomes declined. Rates of obesity, diabetes, and heart disease increased. The nutrient-dense foods that had sustained them for generations were replaced by empty calories. The message is clear. Whether you eat plants or not, nutrient density matters. Whole foods, rich in vitamins and minerals, are the foundation of good health. Processed foods, no matter how convenient, come at a cost. Even today, when people try Inuit-inspired diets, the results are striking. One modern explorer who adopted a traditional Greenland Inuit diet, eating dried fish, whale skin, bird eggs, and blubber, reported dramatic health improvements, better lung function, lower blood pressure, and significant fat loss while kayaking across Greenland. Scientific research also shows that high-fat, low-carb diets like the Inuits can improve insulin sensitivity, reduce inflammation, and promote fat burning. While it may not be for everyone, the evidence suggests that our bodies are far more adaptable than we've been led to believe. So when we look at the Inuit, what we really see is not just a people surviving on meat and fat, but thriving. For thousands of years, they lived in some of the harshest conditions on earth. And not only did they endure, they built strong families, strong communities, and a way of life that was perfectly matched to their environment. Their diet wasn't some temporary fad. It was deeply rooted in necessity, tradition, and wisdom. Every bite of seal, every sip of fish oil, every piece of whale blubber carried with it not just nutrition but culture and survival it was food medicine and fuel all rolled into one and here's something worth thinking about modern science is only now catching up to what the Inuit knew all along that fat is not the enemy that nutrient dense animal foods can sustain the human body in ways plants and processed foods often can't their story forces us to re-examine so many assumptions we take for granted about diet and health today. Because at the end of the day, the Inuit remind us of something simple, something powerful. Humans are adaptable. We can thrive in deserts, in forests, in cities, and yes, even in frozen landscapes where the sun disappears for months at a time. And a huge part of that adaptability comes from what we eat. So the next time you hear someone say that humans must eat a certain way, remember the Inuit. Remember that there's not one single perfect diet for all of humanity. But there is one constant. Real, whole foods from nature, the kind that fueled the Inuit for generations, have always been the foundation of human survival. And maybe that's the biggest lesson we can learn from them today, that the human body is capable of thriving on very different diets, but only when those diets come from nature itself. The closer we are to real food, not processed, not refined, not engineered in factories, the stronger and healthier we become. Thanks for watching, and I'll, I'll see you in the next one.